I can't see from here. Give me one minute. Slides they're not here. The paper slides. Just let me know. I'm not able to see from here. So uh, when we talk about health sector, if you see Punjab, uh, all major big uh, hospitals, they are here in the major cities of Punjab, Amritsar, Ludhiana, Jalandhar, Batinda, and of course, Mohali. When we talk about uh, uh, health care, one essential uh, requirement is a very vibrant hospitality sector. Here also, if you see, all major hotels are in Punjab. You have ITC, Marriott, Hayat, Taj, Radisson, etc. Now, coming to medical tourism, uh, other than uh, organ transplant, which is more in South India, you see all uh, you know, popular treatments, they are already taking place in Punjab. Another requirement for uh, Healthcare is a uh, skilled talent pool. Now, here Punjab again has a big advantage over the rest of the country. We have six medical colleges, thir 13 dental colleges, good number of nursing colleges. And if you see the premier institutes, it's not only government medical college at Amritsar, Patiala, Faridkot. We, we have AIMS at Batinda, and we have very good research institutes. We have NIPER, we have ISER and joining Chandigarh. Then if you see about uh, healthcare ecosystem in Punjab, we were ranked second in 2018 in, in key indicators. We have, uh, we, Punjab is already medical hub for nearby states. It's a matter of fact that patients from Haryana, JNK, Himachal, Rajasthan, they come in large number to Punjab and for getting treatment. And it's also destination for uh, CIS nations, Central Asia, and from an NRA population, they come from uh, Europe and US. Now, very briefly, I will touch about uh, this uh, Aishman Bharat Sarvat Sehat Bhima Yojana. Uh, see, again, talking about commitment of Punjab towards healthcare. If you see the, the, the smallest circle, that is about 15 lakh population, this is as per the SAC data, which is Government of India is only supporting uh, population covered under the last census, which is about 15 lakh. But Punjab has covered 46 lakh families, which comprises about 75% population. This is the commitment of Punjab to, uh, towards the health care. We have added, um, uh, achha, this scheme was, it is only 100 days old, and it's an insurance base and cashless scheme for 75% of the population. Now, uh, very briefly, if I touch about the scheme, it's only 100 days old. We are covering about 1,400 packages. And within three months, uh, we have empaneled 639 hospitals, out of which uh, 434 is private sector. Now, this is when we talk about private investment. This again shows commitment of Punjab. Ki other than government hospitals, we have a very large number of private hospitals which have been empaneled, and more are in the queue. Uh, there are states who have uh, confined this insurance scheme only to government hospitals, but we have not done that. However, we are, you know, it's not that just we are pushing it. We also have uh, state level and, and uh, district level anti-fraud units also. And let me share with you, within three months, we already have, this is not 73,000. Now, today, I checked up the latest data. It's about 78,000 inpatients have been covered in three months. And today... Per day, about 1,400 patients are getting treatment under the scheme. 50% are going to the private sector. 50% are coming to the government. And 1,400 is a very good number. If, if, if you see the big states in India who have this scheme for last so many years, they are around 2,000. We are already 1,400 within three months. Now, uh, coming to medical education, Government colleges, as I mentioned, we already have six medical colleges in Punjab. Two are already sanctioned by Government of India at Mohali and Kapurthala. At both these places, we have uh, more than 200 bad government hospitals. So uh, two new medical colleges will be coming. Then for private medical colleges also on triple P mode, 
we have identified the location and all at Pathan Kot Gurdaspur and Sangroor. See, another requirement for investment when it comes to the health tourism is your connectivity. So road and rail connectivity, Punjab is second in the country. Another connectivity which is very important is by air. Punjab, though a small state, we have two international airports. And the two international airports are now it's, it's for so many years now. And large number of flights are coming to these international airports. Plus we have uh, uh, upcoming domestic airports also. So uh, coming to uh, the investment in the healthcare sector, Punjab government has identified third sectors. And those in the third sectors related to health, there are three sectors on your left bottom, medical equipment, healthcare, tourism, and hospitality. And the fiscal incentives are uh, substantial, 100% of GST for 10 years, 100% exemption from electricity duty, which is about 18% in Punjab. So for 10 years, no electricity duty. Then exemption from stamp duty, exemption from CLU, exemption from property tax, and all other incentives which are available for MSME sector. Now for anchor units, uh, the definition of anchor unit is, some, is, 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 is investment of 200 crores or 1,000 employment. These are the additional ones uh, for 15 years GST. And uh, employment generation subsidy up to 48,000 per employee per year for five years, which is very substantial. If you see, it comes to be 4,000 per month is the employment subsidy. Okay. So uh, these are the recent investments in the healthcare sector. When I say recent, I mean last two years. So large number of hospitals have come in Amritsar, Mohali, and Usharpur. And we have two medical equipment manufacturers also in Mohali. Then again, as I mentioned, uh, hospitals, when we talk of medical tourism, uh, very important input is your uh, hospitality sector. Again, in last two years, large number of hotels. Already there are good number of hotels in Punjab in all major cities. So these also have come up in the last two years. Now, uh, this is very important. Just I would like to you know, focus on this slide. This is about the Medicity. Uh, this is a cluster approach of Punjab. Uh, we have Medicity, which is adjoining to PGI, very near to Chandigarh. 350 acres of land is already identified. And let me tell you, this land will be offered at zero profit to government. That is, government is not whatever the cost of government is towards land acquisition and plus some administrative expense we are offering to the offer to the hospitals. It's a, it's a, it's a world class amenities, very good air connectivity, and very good access to talent pool. It's adjoining Chandigarh, large number of doctors from PGI, from other hospitals, they have settled in Chandigarh, large number of other paramedical staff. And somebody who is looking at investment in, in North India when it comes to uh, the the health, se health sector, this is the best location. If you compare with Delhi, look at the, the Chandigarh, is, uh, this, this area has a beautiful weather, no pollution, absolutely. And then supporting is your uh, ancillary ecosystem in, in the eco city, which is again very nearby. Mm -hmm. These are the two testimonials from Fortis and from TMC. Thank you, and Jain. Thank you for the presentation, sir. Now I request Dr. Shabnam Singh to please come on the stage and share your views on the healthcare ecosystem in the state and how it is conducive to attract medical tourists from all across the world. At the outset, I would like to uh, thank the government of Punjab for inviting me and giving me this opportunity to share something which is uh, very close to one's heart because 
Max, as a group, has been invested in Punjab for the last 40 years. So our first investment into Punjab was in the manufacturing sector. And the next one was this very building that we are sitting in. It gives me a sense of immense pleasure and a warm feeling in the heart because I was associated with the acquisition of ISB land as well as building and as a founder dean of the healthcare management program here. Two of our hospitals, as was mentioned earlier, one in Batinda and one in Mohali, I have to share with all of you that actually these were the first true PPP projects in the country. Hitherto, all PPP projects were a combination of CSR. So, Sablo kehte the ki PPP, PPP, PPP. But when you went into the terms and conditions of that PPP, a lot of it was actually CSR. So, nobody really made a scalable model out of relationships with government. And here is where I want to just stop for a minute and share our experience both as Max Healthcare and as a member of the CIA Healthcare Committee that Punjab has a fantastic opportunity to make this a hub for medical value tourism. Having said that, if you don't understand and absorb both as investors as well as from a governance perspective, the challenges in MVT, then this entire system is not going to be stable. The Tri-City area, the Medi-City, Chandigarh has been work in progress for the last 15 years. And I can vouch for that because one has been part of the process from putting things together to sharing our experiences. So let me give you some numbers. In 2015, the entire medical value tourism value was $3 billion for the country as a whole. It is growing at 200% and at 2020, we expect this to go to $9 billion. But will Punjab or Northern India benefit from this? Answer is no. Why? Because 50% of all medical value tourism is concentrated in the south. So we have Dr. Raghuvanshi and Anupam from Apollo. They'll all train it. Aster is sitting here. It all goes to Andhra. Chennai takes the maximum number of uh, medical value tourists. Right? There is another value tourism. We always think that it will come from and it is cheap here, it will cheap tourism. Mein ho what we all forget is that states like the Northeast, UP, those are also tourists once they leave their own state and go to another state for treatment. They also are a sizable chunk of tourists. So Punjab must bear this in mind. In CII, it took us seven years to get the medical visa issue sorted out. Seven years. So here is... And offline, we will sit with you and share what are the issues in medical visas. In fact, the latest one has just been sorted out. And that is that if as a tourist you come and you fall sick and you get admitted, it is okay. But if as a tourist you come to India and you say, oh, you know, the dental treatment is cheaper here. I want to go get my tooth fixed. Technically, you are not allowed to do that because you did not come in as a medical tourist. So now they are allowing you to do that. I'm just giving some examples to share with you all that when you look at making this a medical hub, you have to, number one, understand that it is not only about hospitals. Hospitals is one chunk of it. The service part is one chunk of it. Within the service part, make sure that the journey of the patient as well as the caregivers is totally made all holistic and every bit of his journey is tied. The opportunities are huge. Chandigarh, you have the hills across when they're waiting. You have 
as what has been mentioned, you have hospitality, but also one must be very, very cognizant that 45% of the tourists who come here are low ticket. They're low ticket. They will not give you that differential that you're looking at. There is where the large population of people who have gone to Canada, to other parts of the world, when they come back, you can offer this. So map the patient journey, make sure that who is coming, you will be able to service all their needs holistically. This has been a huge challenge for everybody. The kind of tourists that you come will then make sure that the investment that you put into your hospital will be appropriate. And here is just a thought. Given the challenges of price point, capping, et cetera, where the local state government does not have full control over, you're guided by the center, the investment thereby, the returns on that investment to the stakeholder get shrunk. And what is going to happen is, if we are not able to understand that there is one population which is coming from outside and we are doing this cross subsidy to take care of our local people, then the level of investment and the kind of investment you will put per bed will not speak to each other. You have to be extremely careful of this piece. And here, the Punjab government can have a healthcare fund of its own. If it's a healthcare fund which you have with other investors, whether they are PEs, whether they are the banks, and you see and understand that the returns are not going to be like that in other, in other industries, like was shown in manufacturing, 35, 36%, healthcare is not going to give you that. And understand that there are going to be two separate wings, one which is going to take care of international patients, one is going to take care of domestic. And I'll just spend another two minutes on the domestic as well as what Sir very rightly pointed out, the success of the Chief Minister's uh, insurance and universal health coverage, which is a, I mean, our citizenry definitely requires us to take care of their health. So for that, you don't have to necessarily go and acquire, ask people to make greenfield projects. Punjab is rich as far as small and medium hospitals are concerned. It's extremely important to take these 50, 100 bedded hospitals, mentor them, aggregate them. Mentor them and aggregate them. Today, Aravind Eye Institute is a beacon of hope and light for the rest of the world, the way they roll out eye care. I'm just giving you one example. Medicine has a plethora of them. Second thing, I have seen both the birth and the death of parks, which quote unquote, are innovation parks for medical technology. I've seen this in Chennai, where there's a medical innovation park next to Chennai uh, Madras IIT. Similarly, the birth of the Andhra one. That is also an area, if you put this all together with medical equipment, the state itself will have a glorious future. Entrepreneurship is embedded, thread into your lives. Dr. Talwar is here, most respected person in the education field. Skills are here, and the sky is the limit. And one would wish all the very best to all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Shabnam. Your views were very much enriching for all of us. Now I request Dr. Prathmesh Pai, professor and surgeon, TMC Mumbai, to share their experience of putting up operations in Punjab. Thank you, Zemi. Good morning, everybody. 
I'd like to just briefly share with you our experience that we had in setting up cancer centers in, Tata, in, in Punjab. So every journey begins with a dream. And way back in 2011, the chief minister then proposed to our director that we need to address the cancer treatment in Punjab. There used to be the infamous cancer train that used to go to Bat from Batinda to Bikaner and carry all the patients for treatment. And that was to be reversed. So we started this center in Sangrur uh, in 2012, and uh, thereby began our journey in, in Punjab. Now, we, you, as you can see, we have almost seven centers of Tata, Tata Memorial uh, Center across the country. Our mission is to promote cancer treatment through excellence in service, education, and research. And towards this, we want to dwell on the various aspects of all these uh, pillars of our treatment in every center that we develop. Now, in Sangrur, it was a project with a memorandum of understanding between Punjab State as well as the Tata Hospital. The state would provide us the infrastructure and we would provide the manpower. So what we did was first try to understand what is the cancer treatment requirements of the state. And we realized this through our registries set up in the four districts. And we found that it, the cancer incidence is not much as much as across the country, and if not, it is not as much, as, not more as was thought. So in civil hospital in Sangrur, we set up a cancer unit. We started with 31 beds, and what surprised us was, was that over, over two years, we treated more than 7,000 patients. So this really brought up the, in the aspect that there is a need in the state. What happened thereafter is that we were proposed further expansion in the same place. And now we have 100 bedded center in Sangrur, looking after cancer treatment across not only Punjab, but also some neighboring states. What has been the impact of this? You can see from 2015 till now, the patients going to Bikaner has reduced by one fourth. What has also transpired is that the patients who were from Sangrur going elsewhere have now reduced. They got more confidence in the treatment facilities that we have developed at Sangrur. And as you can see, the number of patients that are now coming in to the center has increased. We have now close to 12,000 patients registered in Sangrur over the past five years. We'll complete five years in March next year. And what has now transpired is that the 50-acre plot that we are given in Medicity is now going to look at a 300-bedded cancer center. From 100 beds, we have now increased it to 300 beds, and the project is about 300, 680 crores. What has helped us is the Invest Punjab Bureau. All the, all the various proposals, all the regulatory uh, clearances were given to us on time, and then we were able to set up the center and look at Medicity from a different perspective. Um, Principal Secretary has highlighted all the new concepts of the Medicity. We have over 50 acres, and there are other uh, centers coming up in the vicinity, such as uh, Max, and uh, there's an eye center coming up. And there are other areas earmarked for other hospitals in this, in this area. What we propose to do is to set up a 300-bedded bed cancer center, which is state-of-the-art care. We'll have a radiation therapy center with four linear accelerators. We are going to have CT and MR simulators, which are state-of-the-art. We're going to set up an entire interventional radiology suite, primarily looking at the thoracic oncology, which is very high in the, in the state. We're going to have a minimally invasive surgical suite the state-of-the-art Accublade laser suite. We're going to have nuclear medicine th theranostic center. We're going to have treatment facilities with nuclear medicine. And we are going to have a bone marrow therapy center. 
So these are all going to be the state-of-art therapies which are going to be available to the state. We have started construction, and now we have gone on to have uh, uh, the building proposal, which is going to be ready by April of next year. So what we propose is that this kind of uh, center, which is the requirement of the state, will be met thanks to Invest Punjab and the uh, Punjab government. So you need to understand that this medicity is something that is a need of the state. And with the uh, investment that you will do, you will go towards developing a very robust healthcare system in the state. Thank you very much. Now I request Dr. K.K. Talwar to please set this ground for panel discussion. Good morning, everyone. And I also welcome all of you on this particular summit. I think I'll just take a few minutes just to say that all this activity of health promotion in Punjab is about, I'll say, 10 years old to me. The Baba Atomic, I mean, this cancer center which is coming, it was at that time when the chief minister thought we should have a good cancer facility. We had in PGI, but I thought it's not a competition. He went to the prime minister to request for a cancer center here from the atomic energy. People sometimes say it's a Tata, it's not a private. I mean, that's what I'm, this is the beginning kind of thing. Sangrood center came immediately. And there's another cancer center which came at Bathinda. And I think uh, your institution was a great help to us. All the equipment which have been bought for the cancer center in Bathinda and Sangrur have been bought through Tata Cancer. Whatever machines were bought by Tata, whichever state of the art, was only told by the government, you buy the same for this, for us, and we'll give you the money. I think this has been the um, uh, effort Chandigarh, Punjab, I'll say Vice City or a Tri City, you can see, has a huge potential for health. The reason being, I mean, 60s when the PGI came, there's two institutions in the country, AIMS and PGI. PGI was health destination for whole of north, north to Delhi. You take off any state, Himachal, UP, JNK, all these state patients used to come here. So there is a huge potential here. Of course, I think as far as when we talk about attracting patients from outside today, any region of the state has to think of advanced kind of a health facilities. Because if the South has gained on this issue is mainly because certain advanced care programs, transplants, cardiac surgical programs. So I think we need to now look at those if we have to attract patients from adjoining region more or from abroad, or the tourism and visa. 
and the use the this region is known for healthcare because of pgi 60s people everywhere of the country i say today if you look at the professional in the country who have established various specialties in various part of the country either are from aims or pgi had this institution a significant contribution look at um, sort of a, uh, in uh, hyderabad cardiology place the gastroenterology doctor asia center nagar of so he is a pgi pro the many of them so i think these are the reason but only thing is i think uh, the other two good part in this reason is now a beautiful city environment there are no pollution i am sure people are now thinking of shifting from bigger places to come no there is the asthmatic problem my child is suffering i want to shift to this the other is a educational hub whenever a professional try to settle he looks for how my children's education is going to be now this a region has a huge knowledge potential of mohalli has seven eight institution science institution isb iit biotechnology uh, nanotechnology institutions and of course naipur has been there pgi is there punjab university is there so i think no other city can probably boost of those kind of interest so i think these are the attraction and i won't take much time i like to rather now request our panelist uh, to i think they if you can give their own uh, view point in 3 minutes or so to, so that we can have some more discussion to so that we finish on time i think i request uh, dr ashutosh you like to start yes. can we request all of them to come uh, then, huh? please come here dr anupam dear audience after the panel discussion 10 minutes are earmarked for question and answer we request each one of you to please pay attention to the panel discussion and raise your questions please raise your hand if you have any questions and we'll direct the mic to you thank you uh, uh, but, uh, let us all the panelists say give their view points then we go for discussion yeah yeah so yeah, yeah. Then, uh, yeah yeah please sir sure so uh, first of all thank you for having me here sir uh I think uh, the background has been set very well. I think this state is uniquely poised for uh, being one of the leaders in uh, medical value travel. And I think, as it was pointed out by Dr. Shabnam and later by Dr. Um, Talwar as well, is that the value travel is not only international, but there is a need within the domestic uh, area as well. And I'm very glad to note that the policy also considers to develop this as a regional hub and also serve the neighboring states and people who need to travel for such treatment. Uh, uh, it was uh, also very interesting to note that uh, the uh, uh, kind of uh, Uh, popular perception of cancer incidence being high is actually not true so that is uh, some some good news uh, now i think here the ecosystem already existed because there is a huge diaspora of uh, population from this region which lives uh, in various parts of the world and many of them seek uh, preventive treatments uh, and also lifestyle kind of treatments which they would like to do in an environment like this Uh, the pollution is less etc however there are still certain infrastructure issues especially connectivity because this area doesn't have that many international flights etc so i think those areas is something where the policy makers uh, will have to uh, focus in order to generate that kind of uh, 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 volumes the other point which i would like to point out specifically here is that in spite of the fact that this has been one of the focal points of medical education in the country uh, pgi has uh, produced specialists who are not only known in various parts of india but all over the world so because uh, uh, in spite of that the 
transplant programs in this part of the world haven't really uh, developed very well. And that is partly because of the regulatory framework around it. And I think uh, a lot of work needs to be done. In most of the states which have succeeded in doing that, uh, there has been a contribution from not-for-profit sector, the voluntary sector, uh, which have participated in creating these forums for, uh, for example, the organ donation, uh, how, how that uh, works. As an organization, we have uh, done some kind of uh, uh, effort to, to make people aware of the importance of organ donation over the uh, last many, many years. And I think that is one area which, uh, uh, which is required. In the modern medicine, the role of transplantation is becoming very, very important. And I think that is another area where government should focus, not only for medical value travel, but also for the domestic and the domiciles of, of, of the state itself. Uh, I think uh, it's... Uh, uh, there is no reason why the medical uh, ecosystem in this state will not thrive. It is already, uh, uh, there has been a sea change in last 10 to 15 years. Other than what has been happening in the node of Chandigarh, the rest of the state has also developed very well. And many organizations such as IV, Max, etc., have played very, very important role to, to, to do that. As an organization, Fort, as Fortis, uh, we are proud of our heritage. We started in this state, and we remain committed to this state, and we have grown around in this state. So the medical value travel is one area we would definitely uh, be focusing on. Uh, within our system over here in Mohali, we are planning to develop a huge uh, rehabilitation service uh, as well, uh, and, and the second phase of uh, growth of our center as well. So those are the few th thoughts I would like to share with all of you. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm representing Aster DM Healthcare. And I was interacting with a few of you, and nobody has heard of this brand called Aster. So with the permission of the moderator, I'll take a few seconds to give you a brief overview of what Aster DM Healthcare is all about. We uh, operate, uh, we are headquartered at Dubai, uh, operating three verticals, which is uh, hospitals, uh, pharmacies, and clinics. 20, 80% uh, of our revenue comes from the GCC operations and 20% from India. Uh, we have a total strength of around 21,000 employees. Uh, in India, we have 13 uh, hospitals and uh, one medical college, uh, large presence in Kerala. So we uh, um, have around uh, the entire, the 13 hospitals aggregate to around 3,500 uh, beds. And uh, within the next two, three years, uh, four hospitals are under construction of various stages. Um, so that will be adding another uh, 2,000 beds more. So it will be crossing around 5,500. So we cater to around 15 to 20 percent uh, of international patients in uh, our hospitals. Uh, that is that about uh, DM Healthcare. Now coming to the topic for the day, that is uh, making Punjab a destination for domestic as well as uh, the international patients. Um, from the domestic part, I think Punjab is already a destination. I, I've worked here in Punjab. Uh, in Mohali, and uh, I know that a large number of patients from the nearby states come to Punjab for treatment. So we have uh, one of the most uh, reputed institution uh, in the country here, plus we have all the, uh, most of the major chains uh, who are operating from here. And uh, Punjab has a, a culture of quality healthcare. But when it comes to the international patients, then it's a different ball game altogether. For the domestic, we have to create institutions. Then destination doesn't matter. One typical example is Velour, uh, CMC Velour. So if you go there, it has, it's a very small town. And it still continues to be a small town. But that's got the largest number of patients flowing into that region. But when it comes to uh, international patients, um, I would say that, first of all, um, we have to transition ourselves from uh, medical value tourism to medical value travel. 
So initially it was always tourism was the primary aim and on the sidelines of which uh, people would uh, go for some rejuvenation or a smaller procedures and things like that, while the main purpose always remained tourism. But now uh, there are uh, patients seeking uh, very serious curative solutions for their uh, ailments. And that is what I think we need to focus on, as somebody was uh, saying. The South has transitions pretty fast. Uh, so we have almost 50% of the uh, international patients coming to the southern part of the country. To understand exactly what, uh, how to promote this, I think one will need to put yourself in the shoes of an uh, international patient. So the first and foremost that one would focus would be the quality. Um, and I think uh, in the absence of any tangible way to understand what is quality, I think the accreditation would play a major role. So we have the JCI and at least we will have to go for the national accreditation. And I think I missed out one, the most important part is the trust factor. Some patient somewhere in some corner of the earth is thinking, I mean, it's very difficult for me to convince somebody, please come to India, to come to Kerala, to come to Kochi, to my hospitals. I mean, how does he know what this hospital is all about? So that is going to be the biggest challenge. So if you look at the destinations in India, you will have uh, six tier one cities, which is the four metros, plus you have the uh, Hyderabad and Bangalore. Uh, and then you have the two tier cities, which is Chandigarh, Jaipur, Pune, to a large extent. Then we have in the south, Coimbatore, Vishakhapatnam, Kochi, and Trivandrum. These are the only uh, destinations in India. So it is very important. The connectivity part is going to be very important. So if you uh, are looking for some patient to come and land in India and then catch another flight to your destination, there should be something very, very strong offering which is there for somebody to come here. So if we are looking at patients from the CIS to land in Delhi and then catch a flight and come to Kochi, it's next to impossible. So these are some of the uh, challenges that we see in, uh, uh, in Kerala, uh, the place where I am uh, operating from. So we have uh, a large number of persons from the uh, GCC countries because we operate there. So we have some kind of a connect there. And from Times Immemorial, there has been a uh, trade link with this. So everybody in the GCC countries knows about Kerala, a lot of expats there. So we are capitalizing on that. Same is the case with Punjab. Uh, as uh, Ms. Shabna was saying, the, as of now, what we're getting is very low value uh, medical uh, travelers. Uh, if you look at the 80% uh, of the top five countries who are sending patients to us, it is Bangladesh catering to 50% of the uh, patients who are coming to us. Then we have Afghanistan, uh, then we have Iraq, then we have uh, Maldives, and then we have uh, Oman. So these are the countries which are coming to us. But Punjab can make a difference because there are a lot of expats in the developed countries. So the only way is a plus factor. So that interaction, that facilitation is what is uh, going to matter. So I'm sure, I'm, I've taken more time. <laughs> so I, I, I'm sure uh, with all that, Punjab is going to be a leading destination for uh, MVT. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks ever so much for this opportunity. My name is Anupam Sibyl. I'm the group medical director of Apollo Hospitals Group. So let me tell you a story. A lady in New York needs to see a specialist, and uh, she walks into the doctor's clinic, and she'd made that appointment a week earlier, and the appointment was made through a call center out of Chennai. She walks in, and she is greeted by a nurse, and the nurse is Indian, trained in Kerala, spent 15 years in Dubai, and then had moved to New York. She sees the doctor who happens to be an Indian, had uh, worked in India and then moved to the United States 12 years earlier. The consult goes well. The doctor then starts to dictate his notes. The transcription happens out of a transcription center in Noida. The billing then starts. The billing handled, is handled in Pune. She's told that her treatment is only going to be partly reimbursed. So she gets onto the net and types medical tourism and gets 167 million entries in 0 0.4 seconds. She decides to choose to come to India. She chooses a hospital in Delhi. That hospital is accredited by Joint Commission International. Joint Commission International is headquartered in Chicago. That hospital was accredited by four surveyors, one American, one Mexican, one Singaporean, and one German. 
She comes to Delhi, she goes to the hospital and she's greeted by a doctor who just moved back from Houston after spending two and a half decades there. He orders some tests, the tests are made, the kits are made in Omaha, Nebraska. He orders an MRI which is manufactured in Japan. He puts the patient on an experimental drug which is manufactured by a British multinational but most of the trials have taken place in Philippines, China and Malaysia. That is the world we live in. Medicine is interconnected. The question is how do we fit Punjab into this flat world so that it gets a slice of the $29 billion opportunity that will exist in 2024. Why do people travel? They only travel for two reasons. Either that treatment's not available in their country or if it's available, it's not at the quality that they believe they deserve. How do they make the decision? Once they've decided they have to travel, they base this on a high quality, competitive cost value proposition. They then look at how can I get to that destination and what about the other elements around my stay? So if Punjab can address these four elements, I think there is no reason why uh, the Tri-City uh, hub can't become a destination. So I think let's, let's look at the hip, Punjab's population is 30 million. The population of Malaysia is 32 million. So let's compare Punjab with Malaysia and let's see what Malaysia is doing. So this year, uh, the Malaysian Healthcare Travel Council has been given $25 million by the government of Malaysia to promote Malaysia as a healthcare destination. 2020 is going to be the Malaysia Healthcare Visit Malaysia year. So through every tourism office that Malaysia has across the globe, they're going to be promoting Malaysia. The expertise is available here, and if it isn't with the kind of institutions Punjab has, I mean, the fact that uh, Chandigarh is a, is a delightful city, and you know, I was on the board of PGI for five years, so I've seen the growth of tri the tri-state area. So people will come, the doctors will come, the infrastructure is not very difficult to make. But I think the challenges are going to be about connectivity. You can't really connect with 100 cities. You know, At Apollo, we've treated patients from 121 countries, and there is a clear focus on people traveling depending on e, uh, the ease to travel. So we get a lot of patients from the CIS because they're direct flights to Delhi. So they come to Delhi. There are eight flights from Kathmandu to Delhi. But when it comes to taking one flight, then the patient decides. So if they're coming from Africa, you can't have a direct flight other than from Nairobi. So they can go to Hyderabad, they can go to Chennai, they come to Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore, uh, our hubs because they have to change a flight. So I think what, what Punjab needs to do is focus on five, seven countries, just like the Koreans have. The Koreans, in fact, have focused only on one country, Russia, one region, Vladivostok. They get 100,000 patients just from Russia every year. And they're the most expensive in medical travel, but they still are growing at about 30%. So they focus. Learn from Singapore. They have international patient care centers where you get advice on how to navigate the system. At Incheon Airport in Seoul, they have a concierge which says medical traveler. You go there, everything's kind of taken care because all this has already been done online. So tremendous opportunities. Uh, Punjab's a vibrant state. I think the government of India has taken uh, this issue of medical travel very seriously. E-medical visas are now issued to citizens from 167 countries. I think our missions are very supportive and I'll end with uh, an, an example of how a mission can play an important role. So I got a call about two years ago, uh, late night from a colleague in Dhaka saying he has a child in coma, and I'm a pediatric liver specialist, saying this child needs a liver transplant, can you help? I said, sure, we'll send our aircraft. So we got our aircraft ready. Four o'clock, there was a storm brewing over Bangladesh. We had all the arrangements done. In parallel, the, it was a Sunday, uh, the High Commission was opened, and a visa was issued in two hours for the family. So the High Commissions, our missions are very, very supportive. We managed to get the patient down that evening, transplanted the child the next day, went home uh, two and a half weeks later. So I think it's about everyone coming together, the, the private players working very closely with the Ministry of Home Affairs, Ministry of External Affairs, and of course the state government. And if everyone comes together, Punjab has a tremendous opportunity to become a hub. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for inviting me here to be part of this August gathering. Uh, I'd like to share a few things about me and uh, this IV Healthcare Group. 
So me and my husband uh, started, we are first generation entrepreneurs and we started this Ivy story 12 years back with our first flagship facility at Mohali. I'm a radiologist by training and trained at uh, PGI, sir. So I was there and then I worked there for some time before getting into radiology practice and then later on we got into this IV healthcare and we have seven hospitals, six super specialty hospitals in Punjab and one in Panchkula. So the mission was to take super speciality and speciality healthcare to the doorstep of people. With that mission, we started our speciality super specialty hospitals in tier three cities, Mohali first, and then we came up with Khanna, Namasheher, Husharpur, Amritsar, and now Bhatinda. So having these super speciality services at all these locations, when we look back, it's immense satisfaction and gratitude that we've been able to create this platform. And I'm sure with the support of government, we can really contribute a big role in medical tourism. The recent UN report says that India is amongst the top 10 countries in the world which has maximum international immigrants. So I look at it this way that we already have our ambassadors in the, country, in the countries, in the foreign land, outside countries, not just these countries which were mentioned earlier, but also, especially in Punjab, we have a lot of people in Canada, America, UK. So all of these countries, these people can afford to get treatment from the, not just their treatment, but also treatment of their relatives. So this is what I've seen, that we have a lot of NRI population, geriatric population in Namasher, Husharpur, around Amritsar, they can afford that treatment of the relatives in our hospitals. We need to connect with them. We need to connect with the NRI population to create more awareness about the facilities which we have developed. So all our hospitals are NABH compliant, NABH accredited, which is the uh, national accreditation for the quality of care which we provide. In organ transplant, sir, we are doing kidney transplant. We have done more than 1,000 kidney transplants in our hospitals, and we cater to more than 3 lakh patients every year. So we have uh, good quality of care at par in the country in departments of joint replacements and orthopedics. We are doing more than 3,000 joints annually in our hospitals. And we have comprehensive onco care in Mohali. We have comprehensive cardiac surgery, cardiac care. Critical care, which is I uh, was my main forte when we started these hospitals in tier three cities, that critical care is not available. So patient is not able to reach tier two city. And critical care we have developed and we are doing it through telemedicine also. So we have a hub in Mohali and we, connected, we connect our critical care team here with the critical care teams of our other hospitals. So through telemedicine and this attempt, we are able to provide good quality of care to people of Punjab. And I'm sure with the support of the government, we can really take it to the level and we can contribute in medical tourism part. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. God. I think now I have a privilege to invite. Uh, we have uh, Director General Self Export Promotion Council, Government of India, and I'd uh, like her to sort of uh, give her viewpoints and tell, I mean, advise what the state should do. Uh, Anuragji, I think I'm, you start a little late. Can we extend it to till 11.30? Uh, Mr. Anurag Agarwal, Principal Secretary, Government of Punjab. Uh, dignitaries on the dais and of the dais. Ladies and gentlemen who have patiently listened to so many speakers, you know, throwing things at you one after the other and, you know, explaining how well they are doing and uh, things like that. I won't take much time. Uh, I just have a few points to make. Uh, Services Export Promotion Council has been set up by the government of India expressly to help our businesses and our industry export services to the rest of the world. So by services, I mean healthcare services, 
medical value travel, one part of it, uh, education, uh, legal services, accountancy services, engineering, design services. Th there are many kinds of services that are exported from India. Medical value travel is one part of it. It is our job to uh, help all industry and all businesses export to the rest of the world. The Services Export Promotion Council also helps our businesses get an incentive by the government of India given by the Directorate General of Foreign Trade which is equal to 7% of the net foreign exchange earned. I'm sure many of you don't know it. If any of you have any foreign exchange turnover, as far as your hospital services are concerned, please do become a member of SCPC and do apply to the DGFT for the SCIS benefits. I know that all your Max, Fortis, all these Medanta, all these big hospitals already are our members and uh, they are taking these benefits. Anybody who has foreign patients and is not taking these benefits, please do apply for membership and please do take it. Uh, as far as the uh, question of uh, making Punjab a medical value travel hub, I think the potential is just fantastic for the simple reason that the connect that Punjab has with the rest of the world, as somebody else mentioned, you have a very good connect with Canada, with Australia, with Singapore, you name the country and you will have people from your state doing very well in that country. Not just, you know, going as uh, uh, laborers or that, but also doing very well, holding good positions in that country. Therefore, that inherent connect is already there. I would request that government of Punjab, which has created such fantastic incentive schemes, should send it to all the NABH accredited hospitals. There are about 700 odd NABH accredited hospitals in this country, all very ambitious, all wanting to do good international business. I would request government of Punjab to proactively send all your schemes to all these hospitals. It is the hospitals who will drive the medical value travel story. The, it cannot be the patients coming in, it will be the businesses from here who are wanting to get the patients to Punjab who will drive it, they should know how good uh, your schemes are, especially your Medicity scheme. The other thing I would uh, request all of you to consider as home stays also as an option for the medical value traveler and his attendant to come. Punjab is inherently hospitable, you know, I've, I've been posted here for a couple of years and I've seen you, it is, it runs in the Punjabi DNA to be hospitable and to be good to their guest. I think a patient would find it much easier to stay in a homestay and develop that connect for the next 20 patients to come here to this, this city, to whichever city in Punjab, rather than staying in a hotel. So please do consider this, again a request to government of Punjab. The third thing is that the foreign language is extremely important. These are the issues that did not come up during the discussion, which is why I'm raising them. If a particular set of houses, if a particular community trains its youngsters in, let's say, French for the African countries, uh, let's say, Russian for the CIS countries, let's say, Arabic for the Middle East, let's say, Spanish for the uh, African as well as South American countries, you have a winner in your hands. So a community, a colony of houses who are happy to take patients and stay with them and also the youngsters trained in that particular foreign language connect to a, to a hospital is something which will really make Punjab stand out from the rest of the states. The next thing I would like to all of you think very seriously is transparency and ethical behavior. I think that is at the root. You see somebody is going to come here offering his life to you. All right. So this is something all of us have to really, really take care of because remember, there is competition around us. Half the patients are getting off at Bangkok and are being treated there. Singapore wants, Malaysia wants to become a medical hub. We are not alone in wanting to be a medical hub. We should be seen as a highly ethical and as a highly transparent services provider. Only then you will have people entrusting their lives to you. This is something. There's also a question of overinvestment by hospitals and I can, I can tell it from the experiences that we have had not only in here but all over the country. I think our hospitals are overinvested in equipment and therefore their return on, in, the need for return on investment is almost compulsive. 
can hospitals pool i have i have suggested this to other communities as well can hospitals pool their resources so that they do not have that burden of uh, you know uh, generating that return of investment i think that and transparency and ethical behavior are closely connected i am being very honest here because i don't belong to this industry therefore i can afford to be very very honest here we also need to balance our own patients and foreign patients that is again for the gov the state government to take you see there are countries who have no facilities at all here at least if we uh, spend a little bit of money patients can come and take the treatment there are countries like myanmar like cambodia like so many in africa who simply don't have those facilities all those patients are waiting to come here but do remember there is competition government of up has already asked services export promotion council to create their own policy for medical value travel we are doing an event in kerala in end of january for medical value travel government of so there is competition not only with other countries but within the states of india as well and for that purpose we need to do the balancing between our own patients and the foreign patients the last thing i would like to say is that can we consider something like a city to city tie up it becomes a very very useful thing can a particular city in punjab tie up with a few cities abroad so that the patients come here and tie up with those hospitals there for example mangalore and kerala i'm sure uh, we have do we have manipal or we don't manipal is a huge institution it it has created doctors who serve almost all of south india mangalore has created a medical value travel task force the dm of mangalore has created this task force there are 11 universities and 11 hospitals in mangalore alone they have come together and divided specialties amongst themselves and pooled their resources can punjab also since you are going to start on this journey now can punjab also think of creating such task force city wise so that there is a good convergence among the hospitals among the resources and among the patients coming here i have mr dr talwar constantly prodding me stop 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 i'm stopping now i hope and i wish uh, government of punjab really does well in this you have fantastic potential all the very best services export promotion council is always there to help you in all your endeavors thank you thank you so much madam for your very constructive input <coughs> just because of the time constraints i thought we should uh, i think i'll now <coughs> anybody who has a sort of open discussion only i think limit to comment something which has not been said that will be more up. i mean uh, so i think i'll if anybody likes to say anything please welcome is it okay <clears throat> anybody um, we have the mics i think we can uh, sort of uh, i think somebody can help with somebody like this i think um, yeah please 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 good morning everyone uh myself nipun bansal i am director nri services inc we are a canadian company we uh, have just tied up with billiam hospital hospital and dmc hospital uh, as ma'am was talking about the manipal experience what we have seen is uh, when the patient actually arrives in india they, the sops are not in place they stand up between some of the hospitals and uh, the patient is languishing and that you know is a very very bad example of how do you deal a patient so what needs to be done in this region is before we actually get into types and all those things we need to have those processes in place every single thing pick up from an airport has to be a you know the has to be like a breeze these something these are the like that. challenges any institution i think how they will have to promote their services uh, anyone else likes to uh, say quick yeah please quickly because we have a limitation of time Can i think uh, punjab should me? learn from the experiences of other states and what what this gentleman is saying is very right before we embark on this journey if we have these sops in place you uh, uh, you know you avoid some avoidable trouble in the future what other states are learning on the job you already have in front of you and things can be evolved that yeah uh, please <coughs> hello my name is gurjeet singh i am from dhanand medical college and hospital ludhiana 
our hospital is a 1600 bed hospital and multi specialty tertiary care mr nipun bansal he was telling about the tie up that we have uh, with the ontario state so my submission only is that like everyone has said we have all the specialties and everything is available in punjab the only thing is how the facilities are represented to the target countries the government can help us with a portal like the scpc and that portal needs a promotion in those countries and also if the government uh, makes a plan some of the hospitals can represent and go to those countries and we can represent our facilities there only then the things will start otherwise it's uh, you know just like that so thank see, you thanks uh, a lot thank you i mean you see that you have a facility which has a quality uh, that itself this is a kind of a uh, people come because people will come only when they are confident so i think that's important for any challenge to any institution when they sort of had to build up or create punjab i'll say that few areas like for advanced care transplant program is very vital very important and there is huge potential for that and uh, of course uh, uh, then any kind of advanced area which are coming and we should also not overlook the research element any institution also should try to really invest into training and education program because that adds to the quality of the institution anybody like I, to I think what i'd like to just uh, say one uh, there's something which is called market access initiative by cii and uh, in the india pavilion now we have a dedicated stall for healthcare so this can punjab can utilize that and in all the trade fairs that we take across the world please do participate from the delivery so that you are right there that we help you no, i think sangeeta ji made a very valid point is learn from other states because what's the differentiator going to be for punjab how is suddenly because punjab wants to do it doesn't mean change anything as far as the patients concerned so i mean look at singapore every single hospital is accredited by joint commission let punjab decide only hospitals that are accredited will be part of the promotion and what else are you going to do in terms of the medical facilitators and the translators all kinds of nonsense happens because there is absolutely no control over how patients are brought in so i think it's about getting the product right and then marketing it and not just marketing in having people come in with bad experience because that will give punjab a bad name and honestly the risks are very high so everything needs to be put in place and there needs to be a pretty tight control if punjab really wants to become the hub thank you and anybody as likes to sort of uh, before i request uh, to what's up to i i'm kirti here uh, from chitkara university so uh, what i have seen is uh, human resources is, is a critical component here uh, i used to jokingly say with money buildings and equipment can be brought overnight in today's world we can build hospitals we can build we can buy equipment overnight literally but human resources even if you have money you can do that and and today what i see is that's a major lacking in comparison to south and because i was in south uh, and i have shifted 8 years back here what i see is that's a major challenge and whatever training is happening 50% of the students and children are interested in going abroad so there is no focus here and that's a critical component okay if i just might comment on that doc sir i think there is a myth about doctors from india going abroad you know in my batch 100 went out out of 140 now 1800 went out of 62000 so doctors don't go abroad 1800 out of 62000 last year so because we have the infra see, the keys infrastructure I think, i think we are not uh, you see there are because time is limited i think these kind of topics will lead their own kind of uh, uh, discussions so anybody because i think the basic thing is to build institution which have credibility no doubt that infrastructure buildings can be done but it is the professional so i think the institution has to attract good professionals and uh, that i think should be also a, i mean i mean punjab is only trying to uh, sort of uh, stimulate uh, those who are in the hospital uh, i mean health industry or health sector i won't say industry because it's not a good word in the health sector but i think there is opportunity i see because of the education of the region and of the perception of the society. and i think diaspora is fine like even africa there are countries in africa which people are looking for but to only to quality and somewhat affordable as compared to if they go to the europe or sort of america i think um, 
should be, is there any burning kind of comment, comments, question is fine. Quick, quick one, done. okay. So right, I think it's well, this is yeah. a probably a, now challenge for every kind of institution which are uh, sort of a higher can they to have this uh, sort of electronic data, electronic record. Uh, I think, um, I don't think any we had, I think very fruitful, very constructive and educated discussion. I am sure Anuragji and Tiwari must have had input from this to go forward. But I'd like to share with you the panelists, one, two examples of Punjabs in health kind of a, where I think Punjab should take uh, friend. Hepatitis C cure program, 2060 the government of Punjab took a challenge to treat freely. And this program was very well structured involving both the private and the government sector. Till to August 2018 and uh, 19, 60,000 patients has been treated with 90% success. And this is a international kind of story. WHO was so impressed with this that WHO adopted this as a program and the government of India funded to translate into a national program, which has been done from August onwards. I think now probably it's a national program. <coughs> so I think another was a uh, cervical uh, CA cervix vaccine program, two districts were covered in Punjab, more were to be covered, but so, these, so there are few kind of things where Punjab has taken a lead, can take proud. But anyway, um, it has been very fruitful. I'm sure there has uh, uh, inputs and what should be done. I think language is a very, that, that interpreters, because we get patients from outside, but I see in Delhi, if you don't have good interpreters, reliable interpreters, that also is another thing. We have good educational institution, I said, it's a knowledge hub today in this region. Uh, I think with this, I'd like to sort of uh, sum up. I think, Tiwari, uh, 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 you can come, just for your comment. Just quickly, you can make till here. Thank you, Dr. Dalwa. Uh, in fact, it was a very nice opportunity to be here and uh, listening to all the panelists and everybody present here. So, uh, first of all, I must uh, thank uh, Sri Anurag Garwalji, his Principal Secretary of Health and Family Welfare, for uh, designing this particular uh, event. In fact, given the time, only one hour and 15 minutes, it was not uh, justifiable, basically, with the perspective of the health uh, in the state of Punjab. And <clears throat> I thank um, all the panelists, Dr. K. K. Tarbar, who is advisor, health and government of Punjab and chairman of Power Farid University. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam uh, Sangeeta Godbole, who is director general of the Export uh, Promotion Council and uh, Dr. Astos Rakuhanshi, who is MD and CEO uh, Fortis Healthcare, Dr. <coughs> uh, Prathamesh Pai, who made a presentation on the cancer treatments, and uh, uh, Commander uh, Jalshan, uh, Dr. Kamal Deep Kaur, uh, Dr. Anupam Sibalji, Dr. Uh, Subnam Singh, uh, Sri Manveh Sidhu, IAS, who is the MD of the Health System Corporation, Team uh, CII, Team ISB, media people, all the doctors, colleagues, and officers present here. So thank you very much. And uh, on behalf of Government of Punjab, on behalf of Invest Punjab, we certainly look forward that in the health sector and in the sector of uh, uh, health tourism as such, whatever uh, good input points we have received here from the panelists, We'll work on that and uh, maybe in the next summit or next year sometimes, we'll be able to showcase some of the important points which have been uh, highlighted here. Thank you very much. Uh, please, uh, 
I will request all the panelists to be here only because I request uh, Mr. Anurag Agrawal to come forward and uh, honor all the panelists here. I request all the participants who have not registered themselves yet are requested to get themselves registered as it will facilitate lunch and will help in attending valedictory session at 4 p.m. in auditorium. CM will address the valedictory session and we hope to see you all in the session. Dr. Jelson. Huge round of applause for Dr. Jelson. Miss Sangeeta Godbole. Dr. Ashutosh Raghuvanshi. Dr. Anupam Sibbal. Dr. Kanvaldeep Kaur. Dr. Prathmesh Pai. And last but not the least, Dr. K.K. Talwar. Thank you, everyone.